Well, hey, it's Tuesday, October 17. There's been a lot going on uh, this past week and over the weekend. Um, we've seen a lot of movement in Israel. We've seen a lot being set up and prepared for in the south in Gaza, in the north in Lebanon, and along the Syrian border there. Um, we've seen a lot, too, around the world in response to this. We've seen protests against Israel, uh, pro-Palestinian protests, pro-Hamas protests um, that have really developed and, and multiplied all around the world. Um, and, and what I want really to make clear is as we're reading Scripture and as we're trying to understand Okay, the future and what is, what is to come prophetically, biblically, uh, what is God doing? What are His plans, His purposes? Uh, what is His will for Israel? What is His will for this world? As we try to look at that through the lens of Scripture and understand what is going to happen, we need to understand, first of all, that Israel is going to become a focal point. Israel is going to continue to be a focal point, and, and there is going to come a point in, in, in the future that all of the nations of this world are going to turn against Israel. Um, that's established very clearly for us in Scripture. So what we really need to be watching for in Israel as we understand the Hamas attacks, um, as we understand the brutality, uh, the, the killing there in Israel, uh, the response by Israel and their right to defend themselves in that ter territory. What we, what we really need to understand though is, and be watching for from a biblical prophetic community, is how all of the nations of this earth respond to what Israel does. How are they going to turn against Israel and make Israel an enemy? How are they going to start to demonize really what Israel is doing? Um, and we understand in the future that God is going to bring all of the nations against Israel. And I want to talk about that in just a minute from Scripture and look at that and what that time is going to look like. But, but we have to see all over the world we have government leaders, rulers, who are beginning to stand up really and show what is in their hearts, speaking out against Israel. Even this past Sunday, our own president, President Joe Biden, giving an interview on CBS, began to say he disapproves of the move by Israel, the move by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to, to move his, his military into place and begin to look towards taking Gaza and seizing that territory, he disapproves of that. And I know that Egypt now and Jordan, the king of Jordan and, and Egypt, they have stood up and said, hey, we're not going to accept, you know, 1.5 million plus refugees from Gaza. We're not going to begin to accept all of these Palestinian refugees that come in because that's going to cause a humanitarian crisis. Um, and there's a lot of pushback, but one thing that I did notice over the weekend, uh, a, a former ambassador, an Egyptian ambassador, a former Egyptian ambassador spoke up on a news conference in an in a interview that, that, that was being conducted, went back all the way to the Yom Kippur War of 1973, October 1973, and said, hey, we, we were able to use that time to push uh, a sense of peace, uh, a, an agreement of peace, a territorial peace agreement in that area. And he said to the, to the journalist that was interviewing him, this conflict is no different. This conflict has to be used to springboard that area into a peace agreement. And what he's talking about is a two-state solution. We still want to find a, a two-state solution for uh, Palestinians to live and Israelis to live in peace, uh, two states in, in one area. And that is going to be the push. That is still the push from the left. That is going to continue to be the push. They're going to use a conflict like this to try to, again, speak a peace agreement. But we know 
Saudi Arabia was talking peace. Um, we, we know that that has been put aside. Uh, we know that there is a greater intensity, a greater anger, a greater rage that is rising up against Israel. And I believe whatever Israel does from here on out, they are going to be demonized. Um, they are going to be looked at as the bad guys. So we can talk uh, two-state uh, peace agreements, all of these things. There is going to be a turn against Israel. And we see a lot of things going on in the, in the Middle East. We see Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, he's meeting with China today. We see our president, Joe Biden, he's on his way to Israel to meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So there's a lot going on in all of this and a lot of talks today from the Senate on Iran. What are we doing with that $6 billion? Um, are we freezing that? Is that going to be opened back up? Uh, what are we going to do to sanction Iran? What are we going to do to be, uh, begin speaking out that they were in fact behind uh, the Hamas attacks there in Gaza? Um, all of these calls from government officials, rulers, uh, leaders who are beginning to put pressure from both sides. Very, very divisive, um, very, very much showing the heart of humanity. Uh, but make no mistake about it, folks. The Bible is clear. God is going to, at some point, turn the focus of all of the nations of this earth towards Israel, and He is going to bring them against Israel. He is going to do that. Let me read for you a couple of passages of Scripture that make this clear to help us really understand this from a, a scriptural perspective. Zechariah 12, verse number 2 says, Look, I will make Jerusalem a cup that causes staggering for the peoples who surround the city. The siege against Jerusalem will also involve Judah. So there's a surrounding of the city. There's a siege of, Ju of Judah. And God says, I will make Jerusalem a cup that causes staggering for those surrounding peoples. Verse number 3 says, On that day. I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who try to lift it, being Jerusalem, will injure themselves severely when, look at this, all the nations of the earth gather against her. Joel chapter 3, verse number 2, speaking of a, a future event. Again, a future event when God brings all nations against Jerusalem, against Israel. Joel chapter 3, verse 2, I will gather all the nations and take them to the valley of Jehoshaphat. I will enter into judgment with them there because, why? Because God says, of my people, my inheritance, Israel. So God is speaking very clearly, hey, I'm going to use Israel. I'm going to use my people, my inheritance, Israel, as this cup of staggering to bring all of the nations against her so that he can enter into judgment against them. That is speaking of a future event. Now, we have to understand that there is a time of tribulation that is coming where God will fulfill these promises, where God will fulfill these prophecies. This time of future judgment that is coming is known as the tribulation. It is a seven-year period of tribulation, great distress, where God turns his attention and focus towards Israel, stands in judgment first of his people who have rejected him, and he judges the rest of the occupants or inhabitants of this earth who, who reject and oppose him and his plan of salvation, which is Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah. All who stand in opposition to Jesus will be brought into judgment with him. He will judge them. This, this time of trouble, this tribulation time, we know it's going to focus on Israel. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 tells us that. How awful that day will be. There will be no other like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, 
but he will be saved out of it. So we understand God is going to turn his attention and his focus towards Israel. And what we see happening right now in the Middle East, what we see happening right now in Israel, in the south in Gaza against Hamas, in the north against Lebanon and Hezbollah, against uh, Syria, uh, ultimately against Iran and the alliances that line up with Iran. We see God moving pieces into place. We see the nations that are surrounding Israel are beginning to rise up and show hostility and anger. And that anger really is intensifying. And we see that really breaking out all over the world in protest against Israel in support of the Palestinians, in support of Hamas, in support of, of that movement. We see a continued narrative of erase or wipe Israel off the face of this earth. Death to Israel are the chants that we hear, and those are coupled with death to America. We understand there is an intensity and a rage and an ag- anger against Israel and against America, really. And we see that rising up. We see there's a, a movement, really. God is moving into place all of these nations to bring them against Israel. That is what we're watching for over there. We're watching for all of the nations to rise up and come against Israel. This time of trouble, this time of tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel is described for us in Daniel 9, 24 through 27. In Daniel 9, 27, it says, He, that is the coming ruler, the Antichrist, will make a firm covenant with many or with the many, speaking of Israel. There's going to be a need for a firm covenant. For there to be a need for a covenant, there has to be chaos, there has to be war, there has to be a complete turning against Israel. Israel is going to need to seek out a covenant with that one world leader, that one world ruler, the Antichrist. If they are going to seek out a covenant with the Antichrist, there needs to be a reason for the covenant. That covenant will not be sought during a time of peace. That covenant will have to be sought during a time of chaos, during a time of war. God is putting all of the pieces in place to bring about that future prophetic event. God is putting all the pieces in place and strategically organizing everything in this world to carry out His plan and His purpose for Israel and for His people now. God is doing this and God is going to continue to do this. But we have to understand this, folks. What God is doing now, He is justified in. I've heard stories about this and it's heartbreaking to think about and it's heartbreaking to talk about. Because we really want to talk about supporting Israel and the Israelites there and the victims of Hamas. But when we look at the Nova Music Festival that was, that was taking place there in, in the south, near Gaza. When we look at what was going on in that music festival called a rave, we can see in there and look at the pictures from that event. And we see Israelis, we see Jewish people who just got done celebrating Sukkot. They turn their attention now to this unifying um, experience of music and trance in this rave. In the background of these pictures, you can see a massive statue set up, and it appears to be a statue of Buddha. And what they're doing is they're dancing and singing all around this massive statue. And in the background of these videos and and images that have been captured from TikTok videos and images that photographers have captured, you can see this massive statue standing, but you can also see rocket fire overhead. You can see the air assault that happened. You can see uh, people beginning to turn from Uh, enjoying this rave, this this trance-like experience, this unifying 
uh, music festival as it's described, you can see them turning from enjoying the festivities of that festival to running in terror and horror because terrorists are entering that festival and beginning to kill people. What I find very disturbing though is that after celebrating Sukkot, after really celebrating what God has done to to deliver, if we think about Sukkot and going back to Leviticus 23 and going back to what that festival really means, God put the Israelites in in, in tents. He, He sheltered them and gave them refuge in the wilderness. He protected them after he removed them from Pharaoh in Egypt and from 400 plus years of slavery. Sukkot, this this festival of shelters or, or tabernacles or booths, is a time to remember how God protected and gave refuge and shelter and how God Uh, uh, worked with them sovereignly to bring them into their own land over a period of 40 years wandering in this wilderness. Sukkot festival is supposed to turn the hearts, posture the hearts back to God. Coming out of that festival, several Israelite people, Jewish people, began to celebrate this music festival and instead turn their attention towards foreign gods, foreign deities, unifying together as they're dancing around this foreign deity. Folks, I'm not saying that what Hamas did is justified. I'm saying it is sick and it's barbaric. But I'm also saying, folks, we have to understand our God is perfect and holy and just. And He is continuing to enter into judgment with his people. What do we think he is going to do here in America? Where we have turned our attention from aligning with God or or glorifying God or following his ways, his statutes. Instead, we have turned to our own ways. We are living out Romans 1 right now. We're calling good evil, and we are calling evil good, and we are applauding those who perform evil acts. All logic, all common sense, if that is really a thing, has gone out the window here in America. We are celebrating abortions. We are celebrating every evil and wicked way that opposes God and removes God from anything that we do. What do you think that God is going to do here in America? There is a time coming, the 70th week of Daniel, a time of tribulation, Jacob's trouble as Jeremiah calls it. God is going to focus his his attention on Israel. He is going to judge those in Israel who oppose him and reject Jesus as Messiah. He's going to judge and enter into judgment against all those on this earth who oppose him and reject Jesus as Messiah, Jesus as Savior of the world. He is going to rightly and justly enter into judgment against people people who who spit on his name, people who defile his name, people who trample on his name, people who have turned against them, against him in their arrogance, refusing to humble themselves. Scripture says God is going to humble them. He's going to remove the proud. He's going to remove the arrogant. Folks, as we watch what's happening in Israel, as, as we watch with, with concern, with really with trepidation, as we really wonder what is coming in the future and wonder what God is doing, we have to rest on the fact that God is sovereign, that He is in control, that He is going to fulfill his plan and purpose for this planet and for his people and for his inheritance, Israel. 
He's going to do that. He's going to move pieces in place so that he can ultimately carry out his will. And it is all to reveal himself. It's all to glorify himself. It's all to get people to understand that he is Lord, that he is God, that there is no other like him. It is all to get people to exalt and worship and magnify his holy name instead of spitting on his name, trampling on his name, doing everything in our own political power to remove his name from everything that we have. Folks, it is tragic what is happening right now in Israel. It is so sad to think about, to to talk about. I know that God is in control. I know that nothing that we have seen over the last week and a half compares to what is coming. Nothing that we have seen in this world, in the history of this world, compares to what is coming. The seven years of tribulation that is going to come upon this earth is going to be the worst days that mankind has ever known. We have right now, folks, to stay focused. Yes, to to look for, to wait for, uh, to be alert for the return of our Savior, our Lord Jesus. But we have right now, folks, to, to share the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is and what he has accomplished for us on the cross, in the grave, and raised to life again. We have right now to to share his name, the only name given under heaven by which mankind must be saved, his name alone. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. He's it. He's the the solution. He's the Savior. He's the answer. He's the restorer. He's the redeemer. He's the healer. He is the hope that we have for our future. There's going to come a time when he is going to remove everyone who opposes him. And everyone who is left will serve him, will worship him, will walk with him, will go to to Jerusalem where he will reign and rule from. And we will hear from him, word uh, from him will go out and teach and instruct many. Those days are coming, folks. What we need to do now is keep focused on the Great Commission. Keep focused on the, the, the command that Jesus gave us to go out and to make disciples of all nations and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teach them to observe, teach them to obey all the things that Jesus taught us. And we have to know this truth. Jesus said at the end of the Great Commission, hey, I'm going to be with you until the end of that age. I'll be with you as you go out. I'll be with you as you spread the gospel, as you share the good news. That is a promise that we have from our Lord, from our Savior Jesus. We can hold on to that. Even when we look around in, in fear and trepidation, in, even when we, when, when we look around and anxiety begins to build up inside of us because of wars, Rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilence, famines, all of these things. We can still look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He is our hope. Folks, He is the answer. He is the solution. We need to share His name while we still have time. Thank you.